Test firing completed with an efficiency rating of 96.7%. Oh my god, are you all right? Hey guys, how's it going? It's Adama Sanguin and welcome back to the Commonwealth. Today we're taking a look at Green Top Nursery and Green Top Nursery is one of the more eastern settlements that you're going to find. It's right south of Breakheart Banks and just e excuse me, west of the slog. Right up here we have Linwoods on the other side of the river and of course Parsons Creamery way up at the top of the map. Now one of the more interesting things about this part of the map is there are a lot of industrial buildings. Of course, we have Slocum's Joe HQ directly on the other side. We have the old goal at St. Cole and that beautiful, <laughs> what's left of that beautiful neighborhood at one time. Uh, if you guys saw my uh, goal at St. Cole, uh, what was that? Outpost Larry was that build. Now, this build was originally going to actually be at the Slocum's Joe HQ, but due to some restrictions uh, without the creation kit, uh, yeah, I didn't uh, really like how that was going. So I brought it over here. So of course we have the suburban style house. One of the things I always thought was weird about this place is this house is identical to the ones in Sanctuary Hills. The greenhouse itself is identical, what well, with a few exceptions, to the one that you'll find in uh, Grey Garden. So there are no actual beds in here. There's only a couple of chairs, but they do have a ton of tables. I think, what do we got? Uh, what was that? Four or five different tables in here. Uh, I think only like, it's in like three or four chairs. So there is, uh, if you guys want some furniture and a lot of things you can uh, build with, yeah, you're not going to find that here. But if you like tables, <laughs> you found yourself quite a place. But uh, yeah, I always thought, I thought that was weird, those wires up there. I didn't notice them until I was actually recording the vanilla portion of this video. But once you you come around the corner on the other side uh, where I ended up putting my garage that you guys are on Discord and Twitter saw what I did with it. Uh, but of course, the original vanilla mats that are here, I, it just always struck me as odd uh, why they would sleep out here and not inside the house. Uh, of course, our fan, one of these fantastic caravanners, uh, this is uh, Lucas Miller, uh, uh, armor dealer, one of the best in the business. And before I get too far along, I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to Nihir. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, I apologize if I butcher your name. Nihir uh, did a really great mod. It's called All Settlements Extended. For those that have watched my videos for a while know that I've been using the Settlement Borders Expansions project. But uh, due to some issues with uh, running into uh, spawn points and other settlement load cells, yeah, it was uh, causing me quite the issues. You guys know about that crash bug? Yeah, that was pretty much... Uh, as far as I could tell was due to that mod hitting those different uh, spawn points or whatever it was. Anyway, uh, I had a, no issues with this mod. Uh, the only problem I had with this build was really using the Capital Wasteland uh, or the Good Fighters NPCs. As in, I found them to be a little dumber. <laughs> I mean, it could have just been me, but I found them to be a little bit dumber than the standard NPCs that you get from, say, USO from uh, Andrew CX's mod. Uh, yeah, the uh, ones that come with his mod uh, are really great NPCs. But anyway, guys, let's take a look and see how it turned out. I've been working quite a long time, as you guys know, and I hope you like it. Hold that thought. All right, guys, so one of the things that I wanted you to take from this build is that I wanted you to see that maybe this place had been in business for several decades, way before the Great War of 2077, and that maybe schools used to actually send their children here on uh, field trips. So with the school bus here parked 
conveniently under the street light at one time before the bombs fell, or maybe before the truck accident, which we'll go more into in a second. Now, of course, the street lamp fell over. Obviously, that's something that I was able to do thanks to the Quapa tilt. Uh, you'll see that this build is very scrap tiltian, as I'm calling it. Uh, the street lamp fell over on top of that bus, and uh, yeah, nobody was harmed in the accident, uh, but uh, it was uh, quite the sight to see, I'm sure. Now, for those that follow me on Twitter and for those that speak with me on Discord, know that when I was on hiatus, I played a lot of Fallout New Vegas. And for you builders, if you want some inspiration or just a lot of things to uh, blow up, of course, you guys know, amazing game, Fallout New Vegas. Now, with this gun shop, this is one of my favorite buildings uh, here in this build. A uh, lot of different pieces here from USO, Forgotten Workshop items, and, of course, USO. Even some vanilla items in there as well. Now, this truck trailer is, everybody always does a truck trailer, and they try to put a little house in there. But what I wanted to do, of course, we flipped it over on its side, thanks to the Quapa tilt function. And uh, I wanted to have something a little bit different that I haven't seen anybody else do is turn it into a livable space but uh, try to do it when it's upside up or not upside down but on its side so you'll notice back here even with these saves I uh, flipped over I ran a lot of things with the natural curves of the hill how I thought they might have fell now the running lights that may have been on the side of this trailer I thought that'd be kind of cool if I ran them on the uh, top hello there jangles how are you now, the, of course, the one on the ceiling is attached to the side. Those lights are actually from uh, CVA, the uh, Custom Vanilla Assets, and those are originally designed as uh, ambient lighting that you'll find around uh, paths and walls. So now here in this trailer, again, Fallout New Vegas used a lot of these beige, beige trailers all over the entire Commonwealth. Uh, Obsidian uh, did a really great job with that. But of course, me flipping over on its side, flipping it over on its side, the pain in the butt to do with that door. But once I realized that I could just match it up to the trailer, it was actually quite easy. It didn't really require much of any kind of glitching at all. Now, this uh, place is quite scrappy, not a lot in here. I wanted it to have sort of a, an artistic vibe with the floor. You'll see all the different colors and pieces that I used, and a little kitty back there on the wall, and a uh, little living space, not very luxurious by any means, but that's what I wanted to do with that uh, painting on the wall is to so you can see what I was actually going for there. You guys know that I like to try to put as much color as possible. Of course, we have the wild moot fruit and the... Uh, mutated ferns there. Now to my knowledge, these uh, stone walls don't actually exist in a mod, but they're actually pieces of debris or rubble that I found in the Fallout 4 guys requested parts mod. And uh, piecing those together was quite the chore trying to get everything to line up. The first one there is a little bit more obvious, but the other ones I did a pretty good job. The uh, stone pillars here, uh, those are actually the ones that you'll find on the wrought iron fences throughout the Commonwealth. So I thought that was pretty cool, and it, it matched it up pretty good. Of course, you guys recognize that style of door that's that you'll find in the castle. The cool thing is, is I was so amazed that the pathing path worked. I did lay down in the visible pathing path mat under the ground a little bit, and seeing Lucas go in and out out of here was so awesome here in his little caravan guard so i thought that was pretty cool wanted to catch the footage of that just in case now the walls here i thought it would be kind of awesome to run serve two purposes one is i didn't have to try to put that wall and match it up all over and two again it gave me the chance to create something a little bit different the veranda here love how this turned out it was quite the uh, chore finding different pieces that just seemed to work just right now you'll see when you come here in the vanilla, obviously we showed you all the moss on the greenhouse, but I thought it'd be quite fun to add a lot of that moss throughout this. And I didn't add too much. At least you guys can let me know in the comments if I added too much moss throughout this. Now, these little structures here, these little, uh, well, not arches, but whatever you call them, these eaves over the doors, I thought that was kind of fun to use the uh, corrugated metal over top of these. Now, the corrugated metal, those are only available in vertical pieces, to my knowledge, so it was kind of fun to lay them down uh, horizontally and... That didn't sound right at all. But <laughs> there are three different kinds of doors in here. Uh, I have the standard door here, which is in right where it needs to be. Oh, and of course, I added all the water into the uh, misting system here. So I was able to get that working. Uh, that water is listed under CVA's Water and Effects, I believe. Um, I wanted to add 
a little bit more to this little shower area here but I added this toward the end of the build and I was already way over budget by the time I was done and we blocked up this nice one here with that old uh, chunky desk thank you Quapa <laughs> now the semi trailer here uh, was quite uh, fun to work with. Uh, I was so amazed that it just seemed to fit in here as perfect as it did as far as, yeah, look at this, even added the uh, debris on the ground. I got some broken glass. We have some of the uh, wood chunks there and even a piece of the, uh, thanks to STC, ST, uh, or excuse me, STS, I was able to pull that uh, piece of piping down there. Excuse me, guys, get out of the way. Uh, thank you to the sh to uh, the insane Shecklador. Uh, used your uh, door idea for uh, keeping them from opening and closing that. Oh, and of course, people popcorn, she gets out anyway. <laughs> but I actually opened the door and then glitched it into place so that uh, they couldn't open it. Anyway, uh, we got this little uh, shack here, a little custom little shack that's just an, a uh, wall cap and some uh, ceiling tiles there that I added together. I thought that turned out quite nice. And uh, now up here, we have some really awesome scrappy walkways. Now, again, a lot of tilting in this build mostly in places that I just thought it would make sense. So if you look at the walkway here, the sandbags, the cinder blocks, those are actually all tilted. But again, it, similar to the plants, I, in places that I just thought it would make sense. Now, if you guys saw my video that I did, uh, Public Occurrences for Piper, you guys know that I said that I wanted to use the uh, walls and the shack uh, bridges, just how they did in Diamond City. So I just thought that this actually turned out really nice. I love how this turned out. Uh, the NPCs uh, got a little confused at first, but it did take time. And eventually they figured out the... Uh, pathing but uh, they really don't like walls because for them it doesn't uh, make sense but yeah I love how this uh, little area turned out up here now obviously once you put in this dirt uh, this comes from the uh, garden plots mod but uh, you can put dirt pretty much wherever you want it uh, you do require a place anywhere or place everywhere with that yeah I love how this turned out now this whole area up top this awning it kind of wanted it to go for that uh, place you'd find at those big super centers any of those big stores like walmart target stuff like that that actually have a uh, garden center i thought that would be a really nice use of an entrance uh, and as you guys saw underneath with the uh, the garbage can and the bench, you know, anybody that's actually gone to one of those big stores, you would find that in the front. So maybe at one time this was actually the main entrance as far as for the public when they actually came to the garden area. So yeah, I love how this turned out. So check this out. Look at that. All that damage where I thought that, again, where I thought it would make sense, all the rubble, the glass here. Nice. Yeah, love that. Man, Zab, so you want to talk about uh, what happened here and the stories that you find that you come across. So as I imagine it, this big old semi came running up over the, came driving up over the hill, crashed into the other semi, and then of course knocked everything over. Now if you look around here in the back, I got to show you this. I love how this turned out. Check this out. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So I actually had to match two engines with the generator tilted all of them in the same direction as the semi and, and fused those all together and again uh, i just love how it how it actually all worked together nice and this awning is actually uh, three different nickel world bus stops uh, two large one small that i fused together to make one big one now check out the custom uh, light poles excuse me electric posts that we have here got a beautiful uh, water tank back here that's decorated with the christmas lights it always seems to be october november when i put these builds out at least uh, in the uh, Commonwealth anyway. Uh, another one of these walls that I was able to put on the other side and again each one of these sections is actually uh, between uh, four and five different uh, pieces. Now uh, to make it a little bit easier I did start adding in the cinder block but I thought it was kind of nice to make it look like the settlers added it all themselves and was actually working on this. So again this place was already doing pretty well by itself. All I did was come in and help them with their defenses and kind of shoring everything up just to uh, get it all working. Check this out. Got these nice big chunky poles back here holding up the uh, guard post. Now one of the things that I always wondered was all these cinder blocks you see in all the different settlements, all the different builds, 
But how do they actually get all these cinder blocks? Well, I wanted to come up with a way that they would actually be able to make them themselves. So check this out. So I got, I got a couple of different bookshelves here. We got this uh, <laughs> nice little uh, fence post that we've scavenged throughout the Commonwealth. You even got a part of a, uh, a shack railing that we're actually holding it up. And basically wanted to make a form for cinder blocks. And how would you actually do that? Well, here's an idea of how that could actually happen. Got a bit of water there in the tub. I'll go around the front if I can hop this over. But this actually doubles as a uh, a uh, part of the junk wall as well. So I thought that was a really cool idea. Something a little different that I hadn't seen anybody do. Look, it even tilted the water because gravity is a real thing, at least not in Fallout. But I thought that the water would actually uh, should actually be tilted. Nice. So we'll go up here to uh, Lucas Miller's uh, little trading area. Oh, look at that. He's actually, oh, look at that. The nice big stones there holding around the wall. And look at that. Lucas is actually using the seat. Man, I love that that actually worked out. Man. So got, a, a, again, a few more uh, Christmas packages here for everybody. Got some uh, Aqua Pura. <laughs> nice. Now this is another one of my favorite parts of the build. Uh, again, the veranda, I told you I love that. But in the night tour, you'll see that there is a huge glow that's uh, on the front of this area that covers the whole hill. And we're supposed to believe that that actually comes from one single cooking station that you'll find right there where that fire pit is at. So I worked that into my build, made it part of my own, and I thought that it, it, it just actually worked so well together. So I, I love how that turned out. Check out this. We got this nice uh, broken step here. So I kind of regressed a little bit. So instead of fixing and repairing everything, I wanted it to look a bit more scrappy, a bit more junky. And again, let me know in the comments, guys, if you think I added too much moss. But I, I, I think, in my opinion, it just worked out really well. I love that. Check this out. So I love the cooking station that we added in for the caravanners. And again, they got two different seats there on that tire. And on the other section here, so we added the, a little more of these uh, tires into the wall here. The shopping cart, again, tilted that to make it look like it was actually partially rolling down the hill. Got another uh, one of the awesome uh, Wanderer motorcycles. Again, got that kind of uh, crooked a little bit. And the seats are just a shout out to the original garage that you'll find. Now, at one time, this is probably like a fix it shop for their delivery trucks. But here we go, guys. I, I just, my favorite part of this build is this garage. And I, you guys know that I was trying to uh, get a similar look and feel from the load screen that, that as uh, Jopic put it, uh, the infamous load screen. Yeah, look at that. Even got the uh, masonry hammer, which in the uh, images that you see in the load screen, I, hammers a quite a bit bigger but uh yeah I, I love this look at that now when we got actually attacked here uh the npcs actually grabbed this fusion core and they grabbed my mini gun so i i had to uh reload and uh quickly uh add that back in now we of course you guys already know we could take everything off this table if you wanted to but uh, I just didn't want to mess with that. So we got a nice big generator back here. This generator actually doesn't do anything. It's just for show. Uh, all the concrete that's around the top of the garage, uh, that's actually part of the uh, sanctuary uh, concrete uh, pathways. But uh, I thought that kind of worked a little bit. If you guys go to the Slocum's HQ, you'll look and see the uh, garage that I was going for and trying to uh, bring into this uh, part of the build. Look at that. Love that. So back here is the actual uh, area where they keep the larder. So we got a little bit of uh, food storage. Love that. It's turned out so nice. Nice little view out to the back of the house. Gorgeous. Well, <laughs> ugly trees, but it's still gorgeous uh, light outside. So we could take everything off of here. I am not going to destroy uh, all this, but look at this. Some more custom cabinets for you guys. Uh, quite a bit of pieces in there. Uh, got a uh, what, three or four different uh, sections of the uh, common uh, drawer sets. And then we got some stainless tables, about uh, three or four different stainless tables to make that stainless countertop look. And then we got some uh, cabinets that you would find from the... Uh, Modern Furniture uh, Creation Club stuff. Nice. Got a nice big dining room here. 
everything was placed here by me with the exception of the uh, wood here. The, this uh, table is actually uh, about uh, six different uh, pieces of uh, wood planks that I've fused together to make one big table. I made one of these tables for my castle build but didn't get a really good close-up view of that so I wanted to make sure I added another one back in just so you guys can see a little bit more of that. Again, that was a lot of effort trying to get that one table together. A little bit of a washroom back here, just some place where you can come back and uh, wash up before dinner. Uh, wanted to add more decorations, kind of forgot because uh, once I got in here I didn't really look around the corner but I, I still love how it turned out. I love the uh, area here. Oh, and what do you guys think of the ashtray lighting? Uh, that I added, just inverted those ashtrays and added more of those ambient light bulbs from CVA. Uh, they don't require power, which is nice, so if you wanted to add a little bit of light, uh, highly recommend using those uh, light bulbs. They're really nice. So this is the half fade lights. Now, didn't really like that that pocket door was as clean as it is, but I didn't have another one to use. I call this bed the industrialist. <laughs> uh, some couple of park benches, some steel girders, and uh, some old beds that I got from uh, Fallout 4 Guys Parts Mod. Let's go back here to the bathroom. Now another little, little custom cabinet here. I wanted to have the exposed uh, pipes just as you would find in a real uh, sink. And uh, that antifreeze bottle kind of reminded me of a bottle of Drano. <laughs> so that's why I added that in there. Nice. Yeah, the uh, whole thing just really worked out really well together. And we've got a nice little view out the back here through this window. Nobody's going to actually come up here because once you're actually on the outside, there's actually about a foot drop out there. So if you try looking in, it's going to be mostly blocked by the uh, railing there. Uh, all the bars, quote unquote, that you'll see around the windows, uh, those are actually just uh, mini balconies that are actually part of this same uh, build section. Uh, all these walls and the windows come from workshop base items and workshop forgotten items or sediment workshop item. I, I always mix those up. But I'll leave a uh, reminder in the uh, description of this video. Nice. Love that veranda. Just really worked out well. So I was trying to go again uh, with the whole design of this whole section of the map. So come investigate this area guys. Come wander around and you'll see what I was actually trying to go for. Uh, the wall sections here, if you notice all the windows, uh, those are actually doorways that I added in extra walls just to kind of cover them up and uh, make them actually look like windows. So once I added that first section in because you do have that gray part that's supposed to be stuck up in the ceiling, uh, I thought it uh, was a little off but that I just went and worked it all in, added it all around. And if you guys have never used these pieces, these... Uh, parts that hang out off the walls here each one of those I had to add in one by one so each section is only about you know six or eight feet long so going around this entire house was quite the pain uh, the corners uh, are, are a pain in the butt to add so let's go over here to this part now I got this private little elevator that goes up to my uh, living space so we'll go back through here uh, this uh, elevator comes from workshop forgotten items and shout out to the mod author because he's done a really great job of updating this mod and keeping everything up to date to make sure it works so you notice the textures are a little bit different here that art deco style so we'll go up here to the swank pad now I noticed when I was recording this video obviously the uh, neon lights were not working there and I noticed it a bit too late but that's okay I can get it working anytime that I want to it was actually supposed to be keeping with the whole theme of this build uh, with the blue and yellow purple Purple uh, aesthetic. Nice. So I'd imagine this would have been the person that was in charge of the uh, nursery. This was maybe a, a main office for him or even again a private apartment. I love how it turned out. And of course, uh, everything would have been maybe some desks up here. Just love it. Again, go to Slocum's Joe HQ and uh, look around the garage area. You'll see what I was going for. Again, all the windows that's for guided by workshop base items. And again, those are double doorways. Nice. So we'll check out this uh, bookshelf. And you guys know what I do. These are not uh, a mod. I can take everything off of the shelf with the exception of the uh, pre-war books. And those were provided by uh, a curious clutter. But everything else I added on there. <laughs> I did actually have some, uh, oh, here we got the picket fences for the holiday pack, which, of course, gave us the beautiful fireplace. And But again, I was actually going to add uh, several... Uh, 
overdue books. And after about adding 11 of those books, it just got to be too uh, overwhelming for me. So I took them all back off and uh, just added the pre-war books. Nice. You got a beautiful view over the, the uh, settlement here on this private little balcony. A couple of, man, just love how this turned out. Just turned out gorgeous. Now, I noticed that a couple things are out of whack as far as the alignment there. Uh, that's uh, partially due to, uh, you know, the depth of field in this game is quite horrendous. And then another custom table for you guys here. Uh, this comes from the Mechanic section in USO. Uh, that's actually supposed to be a uh, uh, some kind of jar there, but I made it into a table. <laughs> All right, we've reached the rambling part of the video, guys, but check this out. I wire glitched this in, so I wanted to get a little bit of a private uh, feel of this. Look at that. We can shut out all the light from the beautiful skylight there. Love that. Of course, a couple of garage doors that I uh, flipped over on their sides, and then Wi-Fi glitched them to the uh, connector here. Man, love that. Isn't that awesome? I actually borrowed that idea from the Honeyside mod, I believe it was, or Maple Manor. Excuse me, I borrowed that from the Maple Manor. Uh, as if they had a retractable shutter on their skylight. So we got a nice little sitting area out here. We can come out. And uh, the roses there, again, I, I noticed that that one was clipping. But again, they were actually more of a, uh, what do you call it, a uh, immersive rose bushes. So they're supposed to blow with the wind. So until the wind picked up a little bit, that was the only time I noticed that it was clipping through the wall. But uh, I think I did a pretty good job for the rest of it. Well, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the day tour. I appreciate you sticking by. I am Adama Sanguine. I love you all. I'm out. <laughs>